Hello, snowboarders of the internet. I'm your host, Avrin Lefebvre, and in this video, we're gonna be reviewing the Arbor Cypress Binding. I rode this binding at Copper Mountain on a day that was a mix of blue and cloudy skies, cold temps, a little bit of rough corduroy, some chopped chunder, a ton of death cookies, and I rode it on my Ride Shadow Band snowboard with my K2 Thraxxus boots. All right, so let's talk about the adjustability with this binding. On the toe and the heel strap, you have a twist tab, so flip it up unscrew it, then you can slide it forward or backwards to help center it with the forward lean adjustment. It is on a set screw, so you gotta loosen that up to slide it up or down. You can extend the heel cup if you want to with the two screws on the side, so loosen them up, pull it out, push it in. And then you can also rotate your high back depending how you want that, if that's your thing, by loosening the screws and just doing that. The toe straps are on a push pin, so you push down, pull back up, boom that locks you in, and that is everything on this binding for adjustability. So you might look at this binding and see the molded strap and think to yourself, damn, I'm gonna be able to press right through that, but when you tighten it down, it's actually a little more rigid than you think. You do have a little bit of give in the toe strap. The toe strap will fit more of a pointy-toed boot than just a big blunted one. There is some lateral play to it. Overall, straps are absolutely solid. You won't get any padding from them though. That will be utilized by your boot just with them being that new age molded strap. They were a little sticky right out of the box. This was a brand new pair, but they broke in during the day. The heel strap does have a nice one finger quick release. With the toe strap, you basically have to grab it from the front and then pull. That still sticks a little bit. If you're gonna do a one finger quick release on the heel, please do it on the toe. Make it uniform. That way you're not using different muscle memory to open it. They do climb well. You have an exceptionally long tab to pull on just to get it to climb so you don't really have to worry about it. Overall, never really had them slip. They were just sticky right out of the box, but it was a brand new pair. They will break in over time. So with the high backs, they're a little more rigid than you think. You do have some give at the bottom so you can feel that torsional twist, but when you push back into them, they're very rigid. The other thing is this is a very high high back. I was in the medium large and I'm in a size 10 boot and it was pretty much right below my cuff. I was getting some serious calf bite from these. With the forward lean adjustment, it is on a set screw, so you can't adjust those on the fly. Be aware of that. There is a little bit of curvature to it, so it does kind of fit around the shape of the boot a little bit better. Overall though, it is a stiffer high back than you would actually think looking at it. The overall flex of this binding comes in just above middle of the road. It's a little more rigid than you would think. You feel that especially in the high back and in the heel strap. With it having a mini disc, you do get some lateral play to it. It's one of those bindings that when you need to charge, you can charge, but if you wanna be laid back, you can be laid back. It is responsive though. So the ride of this binding is mild to moderately damp. It does a good job of killing off that kinetic energy from the board so you don't really feel those vibrations underfoot, which is good when you get into rutted out terrain, but it's not so damp that it just feels dead and lifeless under your foot. Who's this binding for? Someone that likes to be a tad laid back but can charge when they absolutely want to and needs a binding that will give them that response. The high back is just too damn high on this. Like it should not come up to literally right where the cutout is in my boot, right below where the top of the liner is. You notice it, it just causes calf bite. It just feels too big. I'm in a 10, these are a medium large binding. It shouldn't be that way. It's not that way with other ones. Overall, it's a good binding for what it is. You can be laid back and not have to worry, but when you wanna charge, you get that power. One thing that I will notice is that the heel cup in the past, the screws have been so over torqued that people would strip them out trying to adjust these. I didn't have that problem at all. I was just like, oh, okay, that's a non-issue. But I know other people have had that in the past. At the end of the day, it's a binding. It's good for what it is. It's not mind blowing. I'll probably actually forget to recommend this because it just doesn't stand out to me. Comparable bindings. The Bent Metal Core Pro, the Ride C9, the Now Drive Pro. This has been my review of the Arbor Cypress. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you own a pair? Are you gonna buy a pair? Leave me a comment down below. Let's have a conversation about this binding. If you're new here, remember to subscribe, click the bell, get those notifications. That way you're not missing any of the videos we got coming out for all you snowboarders of the internet. 
And if you really like what we're doing over here and you want to support us further, swing on over to Angry Snowboarder VIP and become a member. Sure, I could tell you more here, but I got a video over there that explains it so much better. As always, I've been your host, Avery Lefebvre, and I'll see you in another video.